Hello and welcome to the Passion, Purpose and Profit Summit. My name is Marie Pierre Cologan and I'm your host for this summit and this interview series. Today I have the pleasure and the honor to welcome among us Vanessa Horn. Vanessa is a speaker and business coach. She um, she is the CEO of Vanessa Horn International, a global business and personal development company, and is a sought after speaker. And she's also the author of the book, I'll Have What She's Having, and also the book, Profit with Honor. Her sales and marketing training and coaching have been used by more than 7,000 mission-driven entrepreneurs to rise to the top of their industries without burning out or selling out. Her expertise is authentic sales, relationship marketing, and high-end personal branding. Vanessa has been featured as... A an expert guest on several Fox, NBC, CBS, and ABC News and morning shows across the U.S. Thank you so much, Vanessa, for being among us. It's such a pleasure to have you as part of this interview series. How are you today? I'm doing fabulous. What a wonderful subject to be discussing. I enthusiastically said yes to being a part of this telesummit. Wonderful, wonderful work you're up to. Thank you so much. Thank you. And um, can you start by telling us a little bit more about yourself and what you do? I am a coach, speaker, and author with a mission to empower purpose-driven entrepreneurs to get their message out in the world in a way that is powerful in a way that is impactful, in a way that is profitable for them. So I work primarily with coaches, with consultants, with freelance agents, as well as network marketers, helping them to create a personally branded business when they're, when they're selling their own services and business and products, then those are the individuals that I most powerfully serve or prominently serve. Mm, beautiful. That sounds really, really exciting to me. Um, can you start by um, telling us a little bit more of when it comes to create this impactful and profitable and this personally branded business, what's the biggest challenge is for woman to do that and to strive in in business being fully who they are well i think that's just it being fully who they are Mm. a lot of women have such amazing gifts talents and a message for the world which would be transformational and bring such value to others and they keep their light dim because they believe that they, deep down, they don't believe that they're enough. They believe they have to go through another course. They believe that they have to learn more. They believe that they have to be somebody other than themselves. They believe that they're, who are they to really make an impact with their work? They, and therefore, they stay in preparation They stay in preparation and they keep their light dim because they don't just get it out there in a bigger way. And I work with with women all the time. And the work that I love to do is to break through for them to see their brilliance, to see the value in the transformation that they offer the world comes from what they have personally experienced firsthand. Mm -hmm. There's a movie that made a powerful impact on my life in college, an old movie. It's the movie Schindler's List. And I don't know if you've ever seen it, but it's a true story based on a true story, and it's considered Steven Spielberg's top film. And it's about a gentleman who was a businessman, a greedy German businessman who had factories, And the entire focus of his factories was profit until one day he transformed until one day he saw that this platform that he had could actually be used as a refuge 
to save the Jews during the Holocaust. Mm. Therefore, he started to employ the Jews in his factories and save them from going to concentration camps. Well, here's this is this is why this scene was this movie was so impactful to me and how it relates to us as entrepreneurs in our business. At the very end of the movie, it shows 1100 Jews who were saved as a result of his efforts. This is a this is these are Jews who live to this day, generations later. 1100 who have continued on to this day they were called the Schindler Jews as a matter of fact and they all gathered in gratitude for this man for having saved their life and they melted all they had to give was any gold that was inside of their teeth so they had the gold extracted and melted down to create a ring for him that said he who has saved one life has saved the world entire. Oh. That is us as entrepreneurs. We can mm. have businesses that are exclusively focused on profit, or we can have businesses that set captives free. Mm. And that is my mission, is to work with the individuals who say, you know what? Not only profits, because one, profits is just a exchange. It's a measurement of the value that we're bringing in the world. So I work with clients to charge higher fees. I work with clients to own their thought leadership. I work with clients to own the gifts and the genius that's inside of them and to have the confidence to be unashamed and to charge high fees. Mm. And so I had one conversation, one gentleman, for instance, who in a one conversation went out and created $75,000 in coaching clients because oh. he was charging nothing, was trying to come into coaching. And I, in our conversation together, he had the confidence to see that the work that he offered caused a transformation in people's lives that were worth $25,000. And he enrolled three clients within, with, from that one conversation. Wow. And so the key is the one life that must be saved is not somebody else's life. The one life that must be saved is our own. We must be set free to shine unashamed, to shine without any reservation, to shine and step into our power because of the gift it is to other people because by us changing our own life he who has set one he who has saved one life by us stepping into that we will save the world entire and so by the things that we have been through is how we can cause transformation in the lives of others wow this is powerful this is so powerful and so you're saying that it actually starts with us owning the value of of what we offer and owning our own brilliance so to actually step into our brilliance to offer it to free ourselves in order to free others Yes, because the longer we stay in bondage, the more lives pass by held captive. Mm -hmm. So this isn't even about us. When we recognize, when we can look at, okay, where was I held in bondage in my life? And I know your story, Marie, for you to have mm -hmm. stepped into and saying, you know what, I want freedom. Yes, I can be an attorney and I can make good money make an attorney being an attorney, but I want to step into freedom. And therefore you know what that felt like, the pain of showing up at your job and doing something you didn't love. And and no you knew that you had to be courageous enough to step out and pursue your passion even though you did not know the entire path. So this isn't about us 
and our and just you know the owning our power is a piece that we have been through it you've been through it and so therefore the fact that there's others who are right now sitting in bondage who are being held captive by fear and maybe a job that they don't love it's about them it's about you serving them that becomes a bigger mission and so therefore we do not have time to spend playing small in life we don't have time we've got to treat it as if this were the last year of my life what would i do and i'm te- i'm saying all this because this is my own story <laughs> mm-hmm. you know it's i i it's exactly what i preach is because i've been through it and so i know like my mission i this is what i believe about purpose this is what i believe about our work that we do is tied up and most potently express the, the seeds of the genius of our work is in our story, our struggle, passion. Can you repeat this last bit? My please? own story and struggle. Can you just repeat the last bit about purpose in, the, is, uh, in our story? Yeah, the... Our- the, the The gems of brilliance Mm. and of our work are found in our story, our struggle, or our soapbox. So when I spend time with clients, you know how we help dig into what's going to be their foundation for their message in the world, how we dig into what's going to be the cornerstone for your high-end brand, we look, I look at if I spent the day with you, if I spent time with you, your essence, what comes out naturally, if you're just yourself, how is my life impacted and different just from having experienced you? That is your unconscious competence. That is what shows up and is a natural gift that you have that you get to infuse into your work that you get to infuse into your brand. And so that's what I do with my clients to get to the genius of what, what is their essence to be able to infuse that. And they have the confidence and they realize this is, goes back to the challenge I see with women not owning it. They realize that powerful ownership and showing up in the world and creating a profitable business and the confidence to step out in them is not something outside of them for them to pursue. It's merely letting out what was already inside of them to shine more brightly. And so here's what happens. We, we will sometimes settle as women, as entrepreneurs, as business owners, trying to get our work out in the world. We will settle for what I call a surrogate dream. A surrogate dream is not the real deal of what we really want. It's what we're willing to settle for because, one, we followed the path of somebody else. Two, we listen to the world, our parents, our friends, our peers for feedback on what they thought was valuable instead of listening to our hearts. And before we know it, we've created a reality that isn't 100% in, alliance, in, a, in alignment with who we really are. This was me. One day I wake up, I had followed the path that I wanted in life, got my MBA, was a financial analyst, and I wake up, you know, good paying job, a career that was esteemed, and I'm like, why am I empty inside? I've got two babies at home who are under the age of two and I can't even be home with them. How did I create a life that I don't even have flexibility? And I was mad at myself. I mean, I had invested a lot of years in education and career building to get to this point where I realized what I thought I wanted, I didn't really want. Why? Because all along I was pursuing something that the world esteemed as valuable rather than listening to my heart. And then I went on, I'd made a change. I went into network marketing and built to the top of two companies. And I was really blessed to now be able to be home with my kids. And I was speaking and I was training and I was you know, helping people build their businesses. But I realized even then it was a surrogate because I was compromising. I was doing it in such a way that was fitting into the norm of companies instead of being fully myself. 
And it took a lot of courage. Two and a half years ago, and in network marketing, you know, we earned a lot of cards and, and trips and stuff like that for accomplishments. And I was, I had this lovely Mercedes Benz that I had earned in one of my companies, and I was ready to get a new luxury car. I'm like, I, 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 it feels good, you know, no judgment for mm-hmm. people, no matter what their choices might, might be. For me personally, I think life is much more than our possessions. But there's nothing wrong with enjoying good quality. And so I wanted a good quality luxury car. But I was like, you know what? I I have to get out of my situation. I am not fully expressed. I must go out. I've got a book inside of me called I'll Have What She's Having, which gives women permission to – the subtitle is called Becoming the Woman You Want to Be by Loving the Woman You Are. Mm-hmm. So I knew that book needed to get out in the world. I knew my message needed to be out. I didn't know how. But instead of buying a luxury car, my husband and I invested all of that money. I mean, my coach now, um, I invested. He was a um, $55,000 to $75,000 investment a year for one-on-one coaching. Mm-hmm. I was so desperate to get out of my situation. I was willing to invest. I looked at that money as like, okay, that's the value of a luxury car. So instead of getting a car, let me invest all of that, which was really scary because it meant draining all of our funds and stuff that I had access mm-hmm. to to invest in coaching. And I got a, a minivan off of eBay instead. And that cost me $6,000 and got that minivan, an old car, and instead invested in coaching. And what I believe, and this is why I have such a high commitment to clients creating a premier brand, to creating high end, is because in my opinion, the air is thinner up there. There's less competition and there's fewer people willing to step up and say, okay, I just don't want to blend in with everybody else. I want to stand out. I want to be a thought leader. I want to own it so that people are willing to step into that. This is what I believe. This is why I have no problem charging fees that are premium and also teaching my clients how to up. Can you just repeat the last bit? I want in life. This is what I'm committed to creating. The transformation in handing over the money alone, especially right. when we don't have it, helps us create that transformation. And so we cannot settle for surrogate dreams. That's what I had done for so long. And it took me until here in my late 30s to finally step into it. And by taking that step to move into my coaching, did I know the entire path along the way? No. All I know, and this is what I always say to my clients, all you really need to know is what do you really, 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 really want? What? Right. Because the answer to how is what. You have to know what you want, why you want it, and the how will reveal itself. You have to trust. You have to step out in faith and get counsel and coaching, but the how will reveal its stuff along itself along the way. We have to start with imperfect action, moving forward and taking a step forward. This is the other piece of advice that I, I give to people who are stepping out, so not selling for surrogate dreams. Number two is in identifying what you really, really, really want, it means clearing out things that don't belong in your life. It means saying yes to things that are hell yeah and no to everything else. And so Mm. I say everything in your life, and I have a worksheet that goes with this, which is you put three columns on a scale of one to ten. Anything that is a ten goes in a hell yeah column. Anything less goes either in maybe or no. And the objective is go through every single thing in your life that spends your time, energy, effort, and focus because it's that that we're managing. That's what traits moments 
of life is where's our time, energy, effort, and focus. And we look at where is it being spent. If it's in maybe, the objective is get it into the hell yeah or put it in the no column. And so I, I do this ritually in my own life. When things start feeling out of balance or something's not feeling 100% on, I'm like, okay, what do I need to say no to? And what do I need to say yes to? Because this is what I believe. Our okay. number one marketing plan is living life in such a way that has other people say, I'll have what she's having. Okay. Um, can I ask you a question about that? Yeah. Okay. So before you were talking about, and I've been through that too, about having a great high paying job that feeling totally empty. Like I was a lawyer. So I was, I was making good money. I had like from the outside, everything seems to be fine. Mm -hmm. But then inside I was not feeling good about what I was doing every day, all day long. Yeah. Um, but what, what would you say when, when someone goes through this, this exercise of clearing what, what is not aligned with what you really, really, really want? Um, what if you suddenly realize that basically the foundation of your life is not what you really want? Like the, the career you are having, or I don't know, I'm thinking about some women maybe being in relationships that they don't feel totally good in or in environment or cities or house. What if there's this feeling that um, it's not just one or two things, it's actually a lot of things. Hmm. How to not get into overwhelm or um, I, I don't know, how to to do it right, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm really a believer of not using the words right and wrong and um, right and wrong, should and ought. They're just mm, words I really okay. remove from my vocabulary because I think it just doesn't let us really drop into our hearts and get in touch with what's true for us. So okay. this isn't a right way. This is just guidance on a way it could be done. And that is, if you're looking at the sheet, the hell yeah or no worksheet, I have examples of how, what I did, and I'll make sure that I'll give you a site where it'll have that. I'll have that as a gift for your, for your audience who's listening to this. But um, I put stuff on there. I put every person I was talking to you, family members. I mean, some of them were in the no column. Um, things that my husband and I used to fight constantly about of like, you know, our taxes and who's keeping up with the finances and literally like 11 years of our marriage fighting back and forth and who's going to do it. And then it was like, neither one of us wants to do this. This is in the no column for both of us. Where can we hire and get help so that mm -hmm. our energy could be going towards doing our brilliance where our money is made to afford that help? Um, so I say go through and I have the categories of relationships, of of work, of environment and so there might be a lot of things that you realize are in my maybe or my no column okay what would it take for it to be a hell yeah a 10 can you do that do you want to do that or is it a no because we will not have a 10 life we will not have what we really 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 want if we're settling for things that are nines eights sevens all the way down to ones and so mm -hmm. you have to trust that when you remove it from your life and you say no to it, that it creates the space for the 10 to show up. Okay. And you take it one at a time. You define, what do I need to do about this? It's a no for me. What do I need to do? Where do I need to get in help? What do I need to change? Maybe I need to move out of my city. Maybe I need to get out of this relationship. Maybe I need to get a different job. Maybe I need to be doing a whole different line of work. There might be a lot of different things, but when you get clarity, you get empowered to start making, and when we give ourselves permission that it's okay, mm. without judgment. Like I was talking yeah. to a woman today, and she goes, Vanessa, I just don't know if I, gosh, I feel really uncomfortable saying this on this interview. Um, she said, I am afraid of getting a divorce. 
because of having, I think she used the word stigma. She says, I just don't want a stigma. And I said, who would you be without that thought? Oh, she goes, I don't want to diminish my impact in the world either from having had a divorce because I help people really create, you know, breakthroughs in their life. And here I couldn't create a breakthrough in my relationship. And I said, what, who would you be without that thought? Who would you be without that thought? So that you can make the choice that's right for you. Right. And not being held back in your work in the world because there's a judgment that you're holding against your decision. It holds us back from making decisions. Drop into your heart. Get really clear. And when you get clear, make a choice. Be unapologetic about it and take action forward. And watch how the world opens up and changes for you when you get clear about what the tens are in your life and you start moving in the direction of the tens. It is likely, Marie, that everybody on this call are talented entrepreneurs. And the number one thing I see talented entrepreneurs doing that destroys the results, that destroys the quality of a business they're able to create is that they settle for 9.9s, 9s, 8s, and 7s, which they can do. They can do with competence and they can do them well. But it takes away from them doing the tens in their life. Right. Hmm. Yes. Um, what comes to my mind is, yes, I think as woman entrepreneur, we... I think, yes, we want to do things right, and because we want things to go right, we might um, – how can I say that? We might do what seems right instead of really go for our heart desires. Does that make, make sense? Mm -hmm. um, so – you're saying that it's really about being clear about what we want or even in terms of our, of our business, what we really want in our business, what we want to experience, what we want to offer and who we want to be. And from there you say taking actions forward and taking inspired action, even if we don't, the whole um, the whole picture, all the details. Yes. <laughs> yeah, let me give you an example. Last fall, I was in the middle of an online launch. I had just decided last summer that I was going to take my business online. I hired a team to do Facebook ads for me, run a whole bunch of funnels, this and that, get everything set up. It was not a cheap investment. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, it looked like everything was falling apart, including a company suing me because I had used my own image that they had also used to promote me in the past uh, in network marketing company, um, mm -hmm. including um, Facebook blocking my domain name because I'd put it on my oh, wow. on my private page, or my personal page. I'd put my Facebook banner, com on them. And so as a result... Facebook blocked it because it was too much business on personal something or that company blocked it. Before I know it, I couldn't even put Vanessa Horn anywhere on Facebook. So all these things were happening. I was in, I was in despair. I was like in total breakdown, meltdown. Here I am and I've invested all this money and I not make money from my launch. Mm. And I was talking to my husband in tears. He was a, he's a, a track coach. He's a teacher and a track coach. And I go and, see him at the track meet and I'm standing there in tears saying, I don't know, is it going to work? And he's like, Vanessa, what if you're going through what you're going through so that you could, this is exactly what your clients need to know when they go through this, how will you help them? So right now, what do you need to know? And I made a mistake that a lot of us make, Marie. I said, I just need somebody tell me, Vanessa, 
do ABC123. I was in tears as I'm saying this. Mm-hmm. Vanessa, do ABC123, right? We think the answer is, let me just get the ABC123, and then that will solve everything. I drive away in tears, and my coach calls me. And he says, Vanessa, if this were the last year of your life, what would you do? I said, I would get the message of I'll have what she's having out in the world, which is a message to women that they are enough, which is a message of breakthrough, of being true to our hearts. When the world says, just be yourself, dare to be you. Well, that's just wonderful words that we say, not even really knowing how to live that out. And I have very practical things in my book that I talk about this, how to be free in that, because I live them. I went through. Fully. It's not some other woman that they're desiring to be like. They really desire to be fully themselves. And it's just unleashing that and letting her come out. I need to get this message out in the world. And he says, go do that. And I said, but I don't understand how this fits into my marketing plan. I got a plan right now where I'm launching a sales training program. That's not, I'm not launching. I'll have what she's having. But I was, and he's like, if not now, when? And I was like, screw it. You know what? You're right. If not now, when? And I went, I went and got in front of a whole bunch of television producers. Next thing I know, I'm booked on 12 television stations. Next thing I know, I'm on like several dozen telesummits and podcast interviews because I started just getting out there with imperfect action. And here's what happened. When I launched that sales training launch, which is a program called Profit with Honor, when I launched that, because I was tapped into my passion about I'll have what she's having, when I was tapped into that, I didn't even have the sales page. I did not have the curriculum created and done. All I knew was I wanted to help people break free, create the life that they want, and I knew that I had the skills to teach them how to do it from a marketing and a sales perspective, and I could serve them with that. And I was fully alive and tapped into my purpose and passion. I launched this online as a result. The following week, I did strategy sessions to enroll into my program, which was at the time $4,000 for six months. Mm -hmm. It's now $6,000, but it was $4,000 for six months. And I had 100% closure rate. Everybody said yes. Because I was fully alive and because it had them say, I'll have what she's having. I I want what you have. I want to feel that way. And they said yes. And then I went on to teach the program after I sold it (laughs) and now it's a program that I sell over and over and over a coaching Mm -hmm. a six-month coaching program so it's us saying yes to that not not even if we don't know how it all fits together just trusting that it will reveal itself I just keep going in the direction of the yes for me I'm like I have to treat this as if it were the last year of my life keep going in the direction of the hell yeah tens just keep going there i don't have time to waste on anything else just keep going in that direction and amazing things keep opening up keep opening up keep opening up i keep having options and i just choose i tap into my heart and say vanessa is this a yes for you right now i had somebody who wanted to partner with me he said you be our face and sell we will now take the profit with honor and all your sales training but we'll take it into the real estate agent uh, real estate agent market with all this this and this he had all this amazing connections and everything he wanted to co-market and in my heart it wasn't a hell yeah so i said no i don't care how much money can be made i listen to my heart i had somebody else who said we want you to be the spokesperson for our skincare company we'll give you a percentage ownership in it do all of our videos be the face of our brand And I tapped into it, and I was like, no, that's not a hell yeah for me. I'm supposed to represent my brand. Had somebody else say, will you lead our coaching? Will you help us put together our coaching certification program? And again, I was like, no, that investment of time needs to go over here. 
into my own thing. Everything that I'm doing is is reflecting where's my time, energy, effort being spent, and is it a hell yeah? Not a hell yeah. I say no, even if I don't know what's next, because it leaves the space to be able to mm-hmm. say hell yeah when it does show up. Is what I'm saying making sense? Do you think this is valuable to your community? Totally. Totally. It, it's so inspiring, and yes, it does make sense. Um, and this is about being and fully, truly aligned with what's really within us. Despite of, I was thinking about um, I was thinking about all the fears that can come up when you actually saying yes despite of not knowing what you're what's coming ne- next and not having like the full plan mm-hmm. um, so I feel it's highly valuable to 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 know that it's possible to operate in that way and it's actually by saying yes to ourselves first that we can come alive and and it's actually more about who we are being yes. than um, all the skills or I mean skills are important too but I feel that it has to to be connected to who we are it's who we are that holds us back. When we can be set free to be who we really are, we can mm-hmm. dedicate what we need to gain the mastery of the skills or to hire it out. <laughs> mm, right. um, but it's who we are that's the most attractive quality that we have of people working with us mm-hmm. and our genius work that we're good at that we might discount. That's what people pay to work with us on. And the only thing about those fears that might be holding us back is it's just out of our comfort zone. That's it. So I had a client who paid me exclusively to work with me for six months to help her live outside of her comfort zone. She's like, I don't want to just be on the edge. I want to be outside the edge of my comfort zone. Mm -hmm. And you know what happened? She lived outside the edge of her comfort zone. She launched a podcast. She's a fabulous, fabulous show and interviewer. She launched a trip to Provence, a, a immersion trip that she's taking for clients. It's, she's going to do at the end of this month. And she's doing this stuff. But you know what happened magically? Now those things oh, – and she, and she increased her rates. We increased – instead of her charging on a per-hour basis, we got group coaching set up in place so that she could exponentially grow her rates and make more money doing what she was doing and work less hours. So all these things were outside of her comfort zone. But what happens when we do things outside of our comfort zone, the line of our comfort zone magically expands. Expands, yeah. And now it's, it's our new normal. So I always look at the biggest breakthrough is going to be on the side of saying yes to the things that feel freaky to me. I just said yes to my first live event in October. That's an immersion event in Vegas. It's, It's in combination with somebody else's over four days. My first live event, it's totally freaky. Several hundred people will be at the three days and then, Um, an intimate group for a private intensive day. And then I just said yes to speaking in the Philippines for in front of 3,500 people to teach them the profit with honor, um, how to sell, how to sell and prospect without being salesy or pushy. I just said yes to these things, which were totally freak out in a way. But now that it's like, Oh my gosh, it was just freaky, freaking me out because I'd never done it before. But I just right. say yes because it feels like a hell yeah. And then now it'll be my new normal. And the what crazy thing about coaching is because people want to do what you've done, they will pay you to teach them what you've done. Mm-hmm. First hand knowledge and experience is way more valuable than textbook. Right. I helped a guy launch a program 
which he was gonna he was going to charge cheap, like I want to say one hundred ninety seven, two ninety seven, and I help people like create really what would be considered high end programs. So mm-hmm. I was like, I know it's out of your to- your comfort zone. This program's worth twenty five hundred. We created the entire system and everything, and this was like when I was first starting out in coaching. And we set up the webinar, and we sold to the $2,500 program. Well, not having done it myself in the past, I had never really done what I was guiding him in. I had studied boatloads of it, but mm-hmm. I was guiding him in it, and he did not convert people at 2500 straight from a webinar to the program. What I didn't know until I'd done it myself was, if you're going to sell 2500 you must do strategy sessions. Like it's that's ideal because then you can create and sell at higher levels. Right. He could sell it at 297 straight to a sales page. So we modified it, but until I had been through it myself and mm-hmm. could nuance it, I'd, I've launched a 497 program. I've launched a four grand program. I've launched 25,000. I'll tell you, the work in in launching the little guys is as much as it is at the big ones, the big price points. I'd much prefer just to put that same effort and convert and serve people at the highest level possible instead of just something that just barely scratches the itch. I'd rather, now I'm like, you can have my 497. It's my free content. But here's how I can serve you most powerfully. And so that's an example of how us saying yes is so critical and us being ourselves being is the foundation for it. And then how our skills get transformed in offering value. Interesting. Okay. But people usually turn that upside down and end up, you know, focusing and buying more programs and doing this and that and this and that thinking that it's skills or certifications or this and that that's help, going to help them get clients. Uh-uh. It's who you are first. Mm-hmm. Owning what is your skill level and your master and your genius and serving with that, serving with what you do best so that you create a category of one in the marketplace and mm-hmm. you don't just get watered down looking like everybody else. And it's actually by serving and offering this value, which is our genius, that we grow ourselves. So it's not by gaining skills through external books or courses, which is also valuable to a certain extent, but it's more about owning what we are, what we have to offer, mm-hmm. and offering it to have the practice to, to really do it. Yeah, I love what Howard... Thurman says, no, 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 Howard Thurman says, um, ask yourself what makes you come alive and go do that because what the world Mm. needs are men and women who have come and are fully alive. And then I forget who to give credit to this, but he said, it's where your great, I think it's, I don't remember. I want to say Peter Buchner, Buchner, I think it is, who said, it's where your great passion and the world's great want intersect that that's where God has called you to work and be. Mm -hmm. So therefore, when we are saying yes to our passion and purpose, which is the core of what this, this call and this tell us about. Mm -hmm. So we're saying yes to the hell. Yeses. we're saying yes to make what makes us come alive. We're saying yes. And being only saying yes to those things, we can get the assistance to market, because all it is, is marketing it and selling it to the people in such a way that the world raises their hand and are saying, yes, that's what I've been looking for. When we can match what we love and make makes us come alive with what we hear the market saying, this is what I want, and they overlap, that is where profits explode. Mm. That's my passion, purpose, and profits uh, summary. <laughs> awesome, awesome. Thank you so much. It's been very 
helpful and inspiring to listen to you and I took tons of notes. Um, it's just it's just very inspiring and I love the way you, you put it, how it starts with us and how it starts with owning our own genius and owning who we are and, and serving others and how it really starts with us saying yes to ourselves first. Um, so thank you so much, Vanessa. Is there a place where people can find you and learn more about you and what you're doing? Yes, um, but you know, I'm not going to just send you to my generic site, which is vanessahorn.com. Well, that's blocked by Facebook, but that'll still get you to me, vanessahorn.net. But I have a gift that's specific to this for this purpose, passion, and profits telesummit. And that is a Discover Your Purpose workbook. It's a starter kit that goes into deeper some of the things I talked about on this call and will guide somebody in getting clear and how that fits into their messaging. And that is at Vanessa Horn, V-A-N-E-S-S-A-H-O-R-N, Horn, like the devil, but not the devil, <laughs> VanessaHorn.net forward slash discover your purpose. VanessaHorn.net forward slash discover your purpose has that starter kit as a gift for your community and it will take them into deeper more on what some of these things that I talked about on this call. Great. Thank you so much for this special gift. And um, this link will also be in the email that um, is announcing this interview. So people will also have this link in, in their email um, to access it. Thank you so much, Vanessa. It's been such a pleasure and to do this interview with you. Um, it's my honor. Thank you so much. Would you have a last word for women listening to us before leaving um, this interview? What in your life do you need to say yes to mm -hmm. or no to in order for you to say about yourself, I'll have what I'm having? Mm. And go do that. <laughs> thank you so much. And thank you, everyone, for having been with us for this awesome interview. And um, I will speak to you very soon for our next interview coming. Thank you, Vanessa. And um, take care, everyone. It's been awesome. I'm still processing everything we've said. That's why I'm talking a bit slowly, but because I'm processing a lot. It's been an awesome interview. Thank you, Vanessa. Goodbye, everyone. Take care, and I'll talk to you very, very soon. Beijos. Thank you, Vanessa. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.